Hey fashion bosses, how are you doing today? All right. So my name remains Faith Abraham, Creative Director of Fashion Boss Innovations Academy. On this channel, we upload sewing tutorials and headwear tutorials, okay? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be teaching us how to make the kimono jacket you saw, you know, on the thumbnail. We're going to be learning how to draft it, cut it, and also sew it. Alongside, we are going to be learning how to draft, cut, a, and sew a one-piece sleeve because we are using a one-piece sleeve with this jacket and not the flay sleeve you saw on the thumbnail. All right, so if this is your first time, thanks for stopping by. Kindly subscribe, we beg you. And if you are a returning subscriber, thanks for always coming back. We love you. God bless you. So these are the fabrics we'll be using for the um, tutorial, okay? I have my panel here with me. You know, it's in two places. One for the front panel, my pattern paper, and one for the back panel, okay? So we are using African prints and the brighter fabric you saw. You can use any kind of fabric to accompany your brighter, your African prints. So I went ahead to roll my starting line, okay? After rolling my starting line on my pattern paper, okay, I'm going to take my shoulder measurement. We are just going to draft a basic um, bodies pattern, okay? Basic, all we need is just the arm or the neckline, the bust points, and a little extension, okay? So I've taken my shoulder measurements, I, I, I've also just taken my arm old measurements. My shoulder measurement divided by two is what I did. So I'm connecting my arm old. My arm old is 7.5 inches as well. Okay, so I'm connecting my arm old line. This are my arm old line. Okay. So I'm going ahead right now to measure my boss points. My boss points is 10 inches. I added 0 0.5 inch to it, making it a total of 10.5. So I've done that. And then I'm going to connect my line for my bust point. Okay. So after connecting my line, I'm going to impute my bust measurement divided by 4 on my bust point line. Hope you understand that, okay? My bust divided by four. Okay, so one one quarter of my bust point is what I'm going to impute here right now plus my seam allowance. I'm going to be using a seam allowance of one inches. You can use anyone you are comfortable with, okay? All right. So I'm back to my arm o, um line. I'm taking the curve for my arm or using my French cuff. You can also do a free hand tool if you do not have the ruler, but if you do, it's also good for you. It makes your work easy. So I'm taking my neckline, the depth, the width is three inches. And then for the back neckline, the depth is one inches. The front neckline, the depth is three inches. I'll be it. We won't be needing the depth for the front neckline, but okay, we are also going to go ahead to curve it out, you know. Like you can see me do, we've curved out the front and this is the back we are curving out right now, okay? So I haven't done all of this. I'm going to go down by two inches after my bust point and measure two inches. So this ruler is actually two inches. That's why I'm using it straight up. And then I'm also going to connect my bust measurement to that line we just measured, okay? So the reason why we measure that line is because we are going to cut in, we are going to be cutting at that point. We don't want to cut on the breast point directly. Okay, so it does not distort a measurement. So basically, this is all we require for the pattern. So the kimono is actually a flay. Okay, so we just need this basic, you know, parts of the bodies, okay, to get, you know, a proper measurement because we're going to place this pattern paper on our fabric and then do the remaining measurements on the fabric okay hope you understand how thus far we've come so if you've watched this video up to this point we encourage you to please kindly subscribe so i've cut out my 
arm O, okay? So I'm taking my shoulder slope right now. My shoulder slope is one inch. So I took it on the um, shoulder part of the arm O, and then I'm going to connect it to the neckline, okay? Like you can see me do right now. So after doing that, I'm going to go ahead right now to cut my pattern paper. So I'm cutting off that part where our starting line started from. We do not need it. Okay. So I'm also going ahead right now to cut my shoulder slope area. We also do not need that part. So we're cutting it off. So after cutting that, we are going to cut the back neck line first. Okay. And we're done cutting our back neck. Like we're going to split our pattern paper into two. Remember I told you that we, we drafted the back panel and the front panel together. So I'm going to go ahead right now to label my pattern. This is the front panel after splitting the panel into two. That's the front panel and this is the back panel. We're doing all of this labeling so we don't get confused as to which is which. So after doing that... The width for our neckline is 3 inches. So I'm just trying to confirm it so you are sure. So I'm going to take that 3 inches down, you know, to the bottom of this pattern paper, okay? I measured out 3 inches at the bottom. Then I'm going to connect the line from the bottom, you know, to the top part of the neckline. So we're actually going to cut out these 3 inches we just rolled out, okay? We are going to cut it out. We do not need it because we are going to be replacing it with the briders you saw earlier. That brider fabric, okay? Satin, door face, door chairs. You can use any fabric, crepe, you know. Whatever fabric you have at your disposal, you can use, okay? Whatsoever fabric your client requires, you can use, okay? Poly material, anyone you have, okay? So this is my African print fabric. I folded it triangularly. You know how we usually fold our 180 degree peplum? That's the way I folded this triangularly. It's a flay. It's a half flay. 180 degree is half flay, okay? Half flay, half of a circle, circle, 180. So I folded it triangularly, okay? So the camera didn't quite catch the bottom part of the african print but how be it you're not you know losing out on anything okay so i got my pattern paper the back panel first and i you know place it on my fabric i'm trying to pin it down so it keeps the pattern paper and the fabric in one place for us okay so i'm trying to secure it properly with my pin the pattern paper to my fabric so after securing it i'm going to reach out for my tape roll and then measure from my shoulders right now okay so the point where i want my kimono to get to it could be on your nail point it could be below your nail it could be above your nail it could be on your hips point wherever you want the kimono to get to it however means how long you want your kimono to be okay so i just move my tape roll around to get a proper measurement like we do when we are cutting circles and flays okay so after doing this measurement i'll just go ahead and cut out this piece and then we cut the front panel. The front panel, you're really going to see the done parts properly. So kindly like this video, share it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any concern, any question, any part of this tutorial you do not understand, please kindly drop your question, your concerns on the comments section. We are always here to attend to your concerns and to your questions. You can, however, send me whatsapp message my numbers are always on the screen okay so before i we cut out i connected my um flay you can see me i'm measuring from my i'm connecting from my arm o 
okay, where my arm will stop, down to where the length of my fabric is. The length of the kimono is i connected it and then i cut it out so this is the front panel right now we are going to be cutting the front panel i also folded the fabric the same way 180 triangularly if i'm sure you understand what that means i folded it triangularly okay you can notice that our front panel is short it is short and small because we cut out three inches from you know that neckline part hope you remember Okay, so I'm also going ahead to secure the pattern paper to my fabric like we did for the back panel. So after securing, I'm going to be measuring my length like we did for the back panel as well. From my shoulder to the length. I explained that earlier when we are doing the back panel. The length is where you want the garments to get to. And you can see how I'm moving my tape rope to get a proper measurement. Okay. So this is basically what we did for the back panel. Okay. And then after measuring, I connected all my chocks together. And then I'm also going to go ahead to place my ruler on the ammo part and connect it. Um diagonally you know down to the length of the garments okay as you can see i'm connecting those lines together okay so i'll place my ruler and then connect it slantedly however you understand the english okay connect it either diagonally or slantedly down to the m of the garments okay and then we are going to cut it out. Wow. So I'm done connecting. The next thing is to cut it out right now. So we continue the cutting. So after this cutting, we are going to go ahead to draft our one piece sleeve. Remember at the beginning of this video, I told you we are also going to learn how to draft a one piece sleeve. A one piece sleeve is a kind of sleeve you use for official garments. Okay, if you're making a corporate um, outfit, this sleeve we're about to draft is a kind of um, sleeve you should use. You do not use a normal sleeve for a corporate outfit, okay? You can use, but you shouldn't use. A lot of people use, but you that know your onion should use a proper sleeve, okay? So you should use the kind of sleeve that best fits your garments. So after cutting, we are going to go ahead to split the front panel into two, like you can see me do right now. Mm. I'm splitting the front panel into two. You know, it's a jacket. The middle part of the front panel is opened. So I split it into two. Okay, so please take note. So this is the pattern for our sleeve. Our sleeve slope depth. Okay. And then it's five inches. From the starting line, let me label it. Okay. I measured five inches and then I added 0 0.5 inch to it for joining allowance on the shoulder area 
so it made it 5.5 inches so this is a shoulder a slope depth okay this is our elbow line elbow line okay and then this is the entire length of the sleeve jacket all right so on this elbow line now we'll impute a round um round arm or circumference or uh, i mean uh, arm or circumference here okay arm or circumference divided by two mine is 10.5 so when i divide it into two i'm going to be having 5.25 inches then i'm going to add one inch seam allowance to it So we are going to be having a total of 6.25 inches here. Okay. Then on our elbow line, our circumference for our elbow area is 10 inches divided by 2. We are going to be having 5 plus 1 inch seam allowance. Makes it a total of 6 inches. And then, and then, on the the length of the sleeve okay the circumference around the area is nine inches divided by two it's going to be 4.5 plus one inch same allowance makes it a total of 5.5 inches right okay so on our slope depth line where we also have our um, arm or circumference measurements, which is this line. We are going to be dividing this line into two, therefore, thereby looking or trying to locate the midpoint. So what we have here is 6.25 inches. So if we divide it, if we divide 6.25 inches by two, we are going to be having 3.01 inch okay so that is going to be a midpoint which is here okay please take note there so we are going to come down here from the starting line to 3.5 inches so this part right now is what we are going to consider as a sleeve cap, okay? That is the sleeve cap. That is the crown area of the sleeve. This is the part that is going to make your sleeve, you know, have that official look, you know, that jacket look, that official look where your shoulders are going to be standing upright and straight, you know, like a CEO that you are, okay? This point right now is what is going to make the difference. So I'm also going to come here by come here and locate on my three points z three point five so I can make a dotted line. Okay, All right. So this part where we located where we have the midpoints of our uh, um round arm circumference which is here this is the mid part remember we located it earlier we are just going to you know square it up you know bringing the line up to meet with this dotted line we have this way what we are looking for is to make this line meet with this dotted line thereby giving us a center you know, this center right now is what we are going to use. It's a very simple tutorial, but very, 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 very um, classy if applied to your corporate outfits, okay? So this midpoint is what we are also looking for. This midpoint, where this point meets with this point. So we are going to reach out for our arm o curve like this. Position it like this okay and then also try to eliminate any form of pointiness around this um starting point position it this way 
and then you connect like this. You connect it like this. Hope you get. And then you turn your ruler this way to connect it into your measurements. Okay? Make sure your ruler is sitting on your points properly. Let me use a smaller curve. Okay? Like this. All right? Make sure it flows into it seamlessly. Okay? You see what we have? Trying as much as I can not to cover your view. Okay? Hope you're seeing. Right. This is what you are looking for. Okay? You see how it flows this way into that way. This is your cap eye okay the crown of your sleeve this is the part that is going to give you that official look okay i'm trying to confirm that i have the right thing here right okay so having done that you are going to use your tape roll to confirm your arm o circumference properly okay to know whether you are in short or you are on point you know the tape roll is not flexible so when you are measuring a curve area you have to position it this way. Okay? So we are on point. Okay? We are so on point. Alright. So if after measuring your curves, you don't have up to your arm or circumference, you can increase it. Okay? And if you have excess after measuring is really really way beyond your arm or circumference you can come in okay so you don't have two ss fabrics fabrics okay so we are also going to connect our points this way and a sleeve a one piece sleeve is ready 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 is ready okay so these are to cut your one piece sleeve your official sleeve for your official garment not regular sleeve for you don't use regular sleeve okay So this is it, this is it, this is it, all right, so I haven't done this because we are going to add this fabric. Because we're going to be using this fabric, you know, on the damp parts of the sleeve. Okay. We are going to reduce this sleeve by two inches. Okay. We are going to reduce it by two inches. This ruler is two inches. Okay. We are reducing it by two inches and then plus a 0 0.5 joining allowance okay and then we are going to cut it off okay 
what we are joining here is two inches okay like a band like a strip like a design you know to the kimono garments so we are going to fold we're going to fold our fabric this way you know using a zero point using a 2.5 inches measurements when on fold you know 2.5 inches you cut it out and iron it properly we are also going to be cutting out a 2.5 inches measurement very long strip on fold okay because when you open you're going to be having five inches but when you fold it's going to be 2.5 the 0 0.5 inch there is for the joining allowance the two inch is for the main um strip okay so i'm going to be cutting this out on a very long piece of fabric okay and then we add it to the front parts of the kimono the front panel of the kimono that we cut out hope you remember all right so i'm going to do all of that and then get back to us i'm going to be replicating this pattern on my fabric and get back to us so we are going to start joining our kimono jacket so this is the back side of the jacket i'm not going to be using a um a lining for this um garment that's the back side and this is the front side so you place the back side the right side facing up and then you pick one side of the front panel and place it this way right side facing right side okay you place it right side facing right side so stitch right so you place it this way one side to the left and the other side to the right you place it this way okay and then you join your shoulders using 0 0.5 inch seam allowance you join your shoulders you join your shoulders and then you go ahead to join the sides you go ahead to join the sides like this okay after joining the side of this part you come to the other side okay and then you join the other side using a zero using a 0 0.5 inch seam allowance to join and then we'll go ahead to fix our band and our sleeve and that is almost the end of this project all right so we are joined we are done joining the jacket as you can see we've been able to join the front panel like i illustrated earlier to the back panel so i'm just trying to arrange it properly i've also cut out my long strip and ironed okay this is the long strip i cut it 2.5 inches on fold and then i folded it in like i can you can see what i'm showing you right now i folded it in using a 0 0.5 inch on one side 0 0.5 in inch on the other side i'm just trying to trim away threads that are not needed okay so after ironing folding um ironing your fabric and folding it in the way i've done mine and also illustrated to you we are going to get a kimono jacket on the front panel you know now the front panel is open one side to the left and one side to the right okay all through all um through the neck area so i'm going to suspend my fabric in between um in between the strips we are adding right now okay and then so all right it's either i sew it like this and then turn it the other way and top stitch it the way we usually sew bands okay and top stitch or i suspend the fabric 
in between the strip okay like you can see me do and then i sew on it so i'm sewing both you know the front of the this um strip and the back together at the same time so i'm going to sew it all through you know the neckline down to the beginning from the beginning of the kimono all through the neckline down to the end okay so i'm also going to do the same on the m of the sleeve and then i'm also going to show you how i'm sewing it okay so in case you do not understand you also do not have anything to worry about right so i'll sew it that way too before fixing the sleeve so we're on the sewing machine now okay i've suspended the fabric in between the strip okay so you can either suspend the fabric in between in between the strip and sew at once or you sew first and then you turn to top stitch the other end like you usually do your band whichsoever one you find convenient and easy for you okay this one is very convenient and easy for me so this is me now sewing attaching the strip to the kimono jacket from the bottom all through the neck area down to the other end of the bottom on the other side of the kimono and then on the front part of the kimono okay please make sure when you are sewing you are stitching very close to the edge of the strip okay it makes it look very neat and not in between okay So I'm done attaching the strip right now to my kimono. It serves as the collar. And then, as you can see, I'm showing you right now, the sewing is very neat, very close to the edge and beautiful. So I'm going to do the same on, the, um, on my sleeve, okay? Suspend the fabric in between. And then I go ahead to sew sewing it very close to the edge of your strip you can also choose to use a bit of um you can also choose to tighten your stitch a little do not use a loose stitch okay So I'm done with the sleeve. I'm just trimming off the SS fabric that we won't be needing. So you see, it's looking very neat. Well ironed. So this is the M of the kimono. I'm just going to fold it with the allowance I left. So you should also fold yours with the allowance you left, okay? So if you left two inches allowance, use two inches to fold. If you left one inch allowance, use one inch to fold. And please make sure your folding is very neat. So as I'm folding, I'm measuring, I'm working alongside my tape row. So one side is not bigger than another side. Okay. Make sure you work with your tape row. Except you can use your eyeball to eyeball it and then it's accurate. Okay. Don't forget the bottom part of the kimono is not straight. It's a flay. Okay. So your tape row is required and advised that you used. So we are done with the kimono. We are really, really, really done. Right? We are done. Also, went, 
head to make a belt for it. The same strip we cut for the front panel and the sleeve. The same strip amount of strip I also cut out for the belt. Okay, it's very beautiful. So if you know this video has been of help to you, kindly like, subscribe is very important, share is very important, give a thumbs up is very important, okay, please. So thank you for staying tuned and look forward to our next video.